All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Let's take a look at problem 81A. This problem has us doing a sales budget as well as a schedule of expected cash collection. You'll see the sales budget, pretty simple thing for the accountant to do, much harder thing for the marketing manager or the forecaster to figure out what the sales are going to be. Once we have a sales budget, uh, the accounting side is quite easy. Uh, the expected cash collection, though, that takes more work from us, the accountant, but let's get to it. Baker Company shows the following estimates for unit sales for next year. So they're estimating in quarter one, they're going to sell 11,000, 12,000, then 14,000, and in quarter four, 13,000. A quarter is just a three month period. So quarter one would typically be January, February, March, then April, May, June is quarter two, then June, July, no, July, August, September is quarter three. October, November, December brings us quarter four, and there is our year. So the company expects to sell goods at $50 per unit, prepare a sales budget. So all we're saying is convert these unit sales into dollar sales. That's a fairly straightforward ask. Let's do it. All budgets are proper documents that are gonna take a three line title, the name of our company, Baker Company, the name of our budget, this is a sales budget, and for the period ended. So we have a few in this course that are for the quarter or for even the month. This one is for the year though. For the year ended, and it tells us the end of the fourth quarter is December 31st. So December 31st. Okay, so we've got a nice title. Now all we do is say, Okay, how many dollars are we expecting to sell each quarter? So I'm going to take my uh, units sold here. Sales, or uh, I guess I'll, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, my sales in units. And I got Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and total. And I'm just going to list them out. So... 11,000, I guess instead of total, we'll call the column for the year. Uh, 11,000, 12,000, 14,000, 13,000. Okay, so adding those together, 25 and 25, it's 50,000. We're planning to sell 50,000 units. We're gonna sell them at a price of $50 each. So, uh, 11,000 times $50, 12,000 times $50, 14,000 times $50, and 50,000 times $50 is gonna give us our uh, sales revenue, sales in dollars. Our estimated or our budgeted sales revenue in quarter one is gonna be $550,000 we are anticipating we're gonna sell $550,000 worth of stuff in quarter one, in quarter two, it's 600,000. In quarter three, that would be 700,000. Quarter four, 650. And for the period, that is $2.5 million for a year. Dollar signs across the board and double underlines underneath the bottom line. So there's our sales budget. Not a lot going on here for us to do as the accountant, right? We take the sales in units, we figure out what that means in terms of sales in dollars. Now a much more useful thing is to figure out when are we going to get our money? Because if I know when the money's coming in and I know when the money's going out, I'll know, you know, am I going to run out of cash? Do I have excess cash I can pay out as a dividend? What's happening with my money, right? Because if you run out of money, you are broke. And so we're, we're obsessed as accounts with when are we going to see our money so let's read on in the question it says additional information the company expects to collect 70 percent of sales 
in the quarter of the sale and 25% in the quarter following sale. So in other words, if I sell stuff in January, February, March, quarter one, I expect to collect most of that money in January, February, March. Probably the things I sell at the end of March, I won't get till April. So that's 25% of the money is going to come in in the quarter following the sale. And 5%, 5% of whatever I sell, I just don't see the money. The customer uh, goes bankrupt or fights the bill, doesn't want to pay. For some reason, I don't see the money. It says the company's beginning accounts receivable was 125,000, all of which was expected to be collected in the first quarter. Prepare a schedule of expected cash collections. Okay, here we go. We need a three line title. Name of the company, Baker Company. We need the name of the schedule. This one's a bit longer. Schedule of expected cash collections and again this is for the year ended december 31st and just like with the other one we're going to have the same kind of heading q1 q2 q3 q4 and a total column which is for the year and I'll be very particular about this. I don't call this total. I call it for the year, for the quarter. And you'll see in future budgets, it really does matter how we say that. It is not a total column. It's a for the year column. Okay. So what do we collect? Well, the first thing we're going to collect is actually this beginning account receivable. It says accounts receivable was 125000 all of which was expected to collect in the first quarter. So let's start with that. Our beginning... AR of 125,000 is all coming in in quarter one. Nothing in quarter two, nothing in quarter three, nothing in quarter four. You don't need to put those dashes. I just leave them blank typically. If you put the dashes, it's no big deal. There we have it. 125,000 from beginning in AR all comes in in quarter one. Now, what about our quarter one sales? revenue, right? Or I'll just say quarter one sales. We have $550,000 in quarter one sales. When do I collect that money? Let's go back to the question. We're getting 70% of the sale in the quarter of the sale, 25% in the quarter following the sale and 5% never. So of this $550,000, I'm going to get 70% now, 70% in quarter one, and 20% of that money in quarter two. So let's do the math. 550 times 0.7 means I get 385,000 now. Oh my goodness. Zero, zero, zero. 25% in the next quarter. So the total sales were 550. 25% of 550 is 137,500. That is how much of quarter one sales get collected in quarter two, 25%. 385 plus uh, 137,500 gives us 522,500. Let's move on. Let's do our quarter two collections. So our quarter two sales were 600,000. Uh, we collect 70% 70, uh, 70 600,000 times 0.7 in the quarter of the sale. So in quarter two, we sold 600,000. So we can't collect quarter two sales in quarter one. Once in a while, a student does that. It would be involve a time machine or something where we collect before we make the sale. No, we make the sale in quarter two. We collect most of those sales in quarter two. 25% though have to get shipped off to the next month. Oops, not 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 600,000 times 0 0.25 is 150,000 comes in of quarter two sales come in in quarter three, 420 plus 150, that's $570,000. Let's move on to quarter three sales. And hopefully you're getting into the rhythm of this now. $700,000 sold in quarter three, we get 70% in quarter three, that's 490. And we get 25% in the following quarter. 25% of 700 is 175. 490 plus 175 gives us our cash collections of quarter three sales for the year, 
six hundred and sixty five thousand out of seven hundred thousand that other five percent we are anticipating we won't see the money let's look at quarter four sales we collect 650 in the moment 650 times point uh seven so 650 times 70 percent is four hundred and fifty five thousand that other 25 percent that's receivable right that's what we're going to receive the first quarter of next year but it doesn't appear on the schedule of cash collections for this year right that's going to be on next year's cash collections we didn't collect any of that money this year so our cash collections here for the year is 455 that other 25 percent receivable the five percent we're never going to see would be a bad debt expense so now we just need totals total cash collections in quarter one we collect 125 plus 385 we collect five hundred and ten thousand dollars we're collecting some money from before and some money from this quarter same thing in quarter two 137 plus 420 is 557 500 that's how much money is coming in the door in quarter two in quarter three 150 plus 490 is 640 in quarter four 175 plus uh 455 is 630. If we total this all up, we can either total down the side or across the bottom. 510 plus 557, 500 plus 640 plus 630 gives us 2337, 500. So we have $2.3 million coming in the door next year. Now I need double underlines underneath the bottom. I need underlines for any number calculated below. I need dollar signs at the top of each column. So the first number in each column gets a dollar sign and the bottom line gets a dollar sign. Lots of dollar signs to go around on this one. And at that point, I've prepared a good schedule of expected cash collections. And again, just to give you the context for this, this company will prepare a schedule of expected cash collection so it knows when its money's coming in. It'll also prepare spending budgets to know when it's spending that money. And if, if it compares the two, it knows, do I have enough money coming in to cover my spending? If not, I need to borrow. I need to get investors to invest money or I'm going to run out. And if I run out of money, I'm dead. So this is the first piece of that puzzle. And I hope it's been helpful to you. And if it has, I hope you'll be helpful to me. Don't be shy about hitting either one of those buttons. And I hope you have a great day. Bye for now.